Today I'm working on something that I've wanted to work on for a very long time and that is creating my next paid product. It's gonna be a very cheap paid product. I'm making a little like Figma library of hand-drawn elements that you can use in FigJam, add to a website. If you've visited my website before, you probably know that I love adding a little hand-drawn touch to a website. Also my first product, which was my font Grayscale, is a handwritten font. I think it's super fun to create the contrast of adding handmade things to a very digital, like sometimes sterile environment that is the web. So yeah, I'm gonna make this file to make it easier for other people to do that too. I have a plan for my day. I've written on sticky notes. We can see here that first First up, I gotta draw all my shapes. Then I'm going to actually draw them again two more times, V2 and V3, because I want to have three different weights. So I want to have, oh, hello, missing fingernail polish. I want to have a thin, uh, like medium weight and a really thick weight, depending on like the look someone wants to go for or like what they want to emphasize. Then I need to vectorize all the shapes. Then I need to create them all as components with variants in Figma and then do a bunch of testing. I've just written Fig Jam, but also like obviously using it in Figma too. It's going to be a fun day. I'm looking forward to making this and bringing you along with me. But first, coffee. pretty happy with how this initial set of shapes is coming together. To figure out what I wanted to draw, I went back and looked at the past few months of fig jams that I've created and thought about what shapes do I wish I'd had easy access to that could have made these a like look more engaging or help with the flow of the brainstorm we were working within. Also looked at my site, the ConvertKit site, at what hand-drawn shapes I tend to create bespoke when I'm working on those things and I've made sure that I've added them in too. I think there's a lot of nice options for people, a lot of arrows, but I think they'll come in handy. <laughs> I'm gonna call this posted done for now I think. I'm sure I'll add to this as I get into the testing phase and figure out what's missing like what I wish I had once I'm seeing it in Figma but for now I'm going to move on to step two drawing all these shapes in a different weight pen. I think I'm going to go thinner and then go thicker. Alright, so that is the thin version done, V2 of the shapes. To do this thicker version though, I think I want to add in texture rather than doing like, let me just draw with this one as an example. This is the studio pen in Procreate that I usually use. Rather than do this but thicker, I'm thinking of doing a more textured one like this. But I want to bring it into Illustrator first, I think, and play around with Image Trace to see what this will end up actually looking like. And then, then I don't know. I mean, a non-textured but still very thick version could still be useful. So maybe this will actually be a like fourth option in the pack, which um, does provide more value and it'll be more work for me to create, but I think it'll be worth it. Yeah, I'm gonna have a think about that. As you can see here as well, this is how I'm creating the different versions. So I just have the original shapes that I drew, I have on a separate layer and I just lowered the opacity. So I'm like drawing over top in the new pen so that they end up being pretty much the same shape. Obviously, because it's all hand-drawn, there's variations between them, which I think is quite cool. But yeah, that will help me keep things vaguely the same size when I make these into components. You know what, I'm gonna do a thick version with a smooth pan to start um, and then I'll think about texture. So this is a look at the like vectorized version. Let's just expand this actually and see how many anchor points. Mm, it's pretty busy, but it's not too bad. Vectorized version, the original screenshot. Definitely you can tell like when you get in here, all the details, little blobs, but I think that the scale they're gonna be used at will still be okay. I think I'm gonna go ahead and make a textured version using this pen. I think it'll be cool. I also discovered while attempting to do this, cause I at first exported the whole like page from Procreate, come up here and I'll show you on this one. It's not working well for me to vectorize it all in one go. You end up with things like blending together too much and it just takes some of the like organicness, is that a word, away from it. So instead what I've done is broken the page into pieces and then vectorized like a little chunk at a time and then we get to keep all the lovely little like hand-drawn pieces like with O overlapped for example. So yeah I'm really happy with how this is going. I'm gonna go ahead and make the textured version now and then we will vectorize all the things. This 
Illustrator file is struggling. There's a lot of anchor points in it, I think. If you've never used Image Trace before and you want to know how I've been doing this, basically Image Trace is in the object menu here. So you open that to get this menu showing because um, yeah, Illustrator doesn't show contextual menus like Figma does. Then in here, I always select ignore white when I'm tracing something that's like um, black outlines like this, click trace. And then I basically just like play around with the settings until it does what I want it to do and looks how I want it to look, <laughs> which in my case is as close to the original as possible. So yeah, we have this um, very slowly loading file of all of my drawings vectored now. Oh yeah, let's click save quickly because we don't want any issues with that. It's really hard to get used to working in a non-autosave tool again, isn't it? <laughs> Rather than just copy everything um, over to Figma, I'm going to bring over elements one by one. I think that'll be tidier. And I'm going to get started with the like framework for my components that I'm going to build just with one first arrow to figure out like what are the variants that I need. Um, I know I want to set up color styles as well so that people can um, easily convert the library into their own brand colors. And so yeah, I'm going to think about the, um, what's the word for that? I don't know, structure I guess, of the component and how I'm going to set this all up before I bring over all of the other shapes to do the same. So here's how I'd make the components. First I would copy the vector from Illustrator where I'd image traced it and put it into Figma. I just copied um, each piece. Then I would make a component from the first one and I used the like regular weight as my default. I gave it the component property of weight and wrote regular. Then I'd click the little plus icon here to add another variant, copy in the thin vector, give it the name thin, uh, same for the chonky one. I decided to call it chonky because I liked it better than thick. <laughs> The textured one, I found it hard at first to like accurately flatten the vector because there's just so much going on in it. And so sometimes I ended up grouping things, realizing later that I could just flatten the vector without having to do any sort of union subtracting thing first. I got sick of typing out all of the different weight names, like the names of my variants, and then realized that if I just duplicate the component, so duplicate number one here, I can paste in the vectors for number two and I don't have to like repeat that setup thing. So I just paste in the new vector, delete the old one and boom, we have a three or four or five, etc. I am not a Figma power user y'all, but eventually I did figure out that I could save myself even more time by duplicating a full component with all of the colors in it and see how I just moved the white, purple and teal ones down below so that they're still there, but they're not like getting in my way. And that means that the variants, the like options for that variant stay accessible in my file because they still like exist somewhere. So I paste in my vectors for the dashes, then select them all, click resize to fit or use the short key. Then I copy all the black ones, so one of each of the weights, change them to white and white is still available in the drop down here because I kept that like old uh, equal sign component below. Do the same for the purple and the teal. And then when all of that's in there, I can remove the old vectors and resize the component. And yeah, that meant just like a lot less typing of weights and typing of colors. <laughs> Another thing that saved me time was the rename it plugin. And now you know me, I don't normally name my layers in the file. I don't normally bother with that, but given this is a product people are paying for, I wanted to make things as clear as possible. So with this plugin, I could select one shape in all of its different pen widths and then rename all the layers at once. It was very easy to do and I definitely recommend this plugin. I've made a lot of progress with this file, but as I got everything that I initially wanted to create set up, I've also realized that there were some things missing. This was my list of extra things that that I wanted to add. And I also noticed that I needed to make a few changes to some of the setup that I had. So for example, I had my shapes all in the same file. So we'd see the small, medium and large circle um, all within the same file and you would change the size of them through a component property. I decided that that wasn't as useful when it came to being in FigJam. In Figma, this worked okay because you'd like drag in a circle and then you'd change the size in here as well as, you know, being able to change the the jonkiness or whatever it is that you want. Um, but for Fig Jam, and I do want this sticker pack to be really useful for Fig Jam as well. Um, you drag it in in Fig Jam and the variants aren't, like it's not as obvious what changes between each variant. And so you kind of just see a bunch of different circles and you're like, okay, these just like look like more circles. I know if I click on this one, it's gonna be a larger circle, but that's just not as obvious in this panel here. So instead I'm going to break them out into separate sizes. So you'll be able to see a little bit clearer, I hope anyway, what the small, medium and large um, shape is. I don't know, that's the idea at least. I did the same for dividers, breaking out the different line styles. I used to have this all in one component and then decided that it'd be 
nicer if in Fig Jam you could just see the kind of line that you wanted to add. And I think that works well in Figma as well to just make your choice here. And I think if I'm not mistaken, you could swap it out an instance, yeah, for um, a different line style if you wanted. So, you know, it's still easy to switch between. You're just doing it up here at the instance level instead of through the component properties. So what I'm doing now is I've just drawn up my extra shapes. Here they are hanging out down here. I've still got a few more that I need to bring over from Illustrator, which is where I do my like image tracing. I'm gonna set these up. I just felt like I wanted some more like wild and scribbly scribbles, um, since scribbles is the name of this pack. It's taking a bit of extra time. I really like to be in the like finalizing, preparing the promotional imagery stage of this project, but I know that taking this extra time to add this extra value to it, because these are things that I've noticed myself want when I've been setting up Fig Jam files this week. It's gonna be worth it and uh, we'll get it added in. Then I wanna go in and tidy up all of my variants, just make them, make sure they're laid out all nicely and that, I don't know, this, um, the folder looks nice because um, I want people to see this as a high quality product. I have spent a lot of time on it and I know that that extra bit of tidying, even though it's not something that I personally enjoy doing in a Figma file, is gonna be worth it. So yeah, let's get on and uh, add these last few shapes in. Okay people, today is the day that I finish this product, finally. Today is the last day for me to submit it to Figma to be part of like the launch of this new feature. So I wanna get it done. I wanna take advantage of that opportunity. I'm like really close to finishing, but there's just a few more things that I wanna do to make this product something I'm like truly super proud of. The first thing is that I looked the other day at how many assets are in this library. Um, Cause I didn't plan on a certain number at the beginning. I was just like drawing what shapes I felt like might be useful. There's currently 93 and I feel like I just need to add seven more components to make this a nice round 100 different shapes with four different styles that's like a ton of different options that I'm giving people and it's just like a nice round number to say. So yesterday I drew seven more shapes on my iPad. I need to vector those, get them into components today as a first step. Then I need to tidy everything. I want to get all my variants like nicely laid out, evenly spaced, looking nice so that this file looks super professional. I need to work on the like about page as well. So the first page of the file is one that will be accessed for free within Figma and that's where I can give a little bit of information about the product. I can like, give people an example of a couple of components to play with. Currently I only have this uh, thumbnail in here. This is what the cover's looking like. I think it's looking super cool. I'm really proud of it um, and this is just like yeah bringing all these shapes together is exactly what I wanted to be able to do with the product so it's fun to see that come to life. After I do that and well this is already sounding like quite a long to-do list for the day. <laughs> I need to make a couple of like promotional assets that I can hand on to Figma. I can like make a bunch more for myself later on but like today is the deadline to get some stuff over to them so I'm going to make that happen I've got some coffee um, I'm gonna get some good tunes going on the airpods and uh, we'll make this happen Check it out. After many, many hours, like way more hours than I would have expected, I finally have this like information page sorted. So here I've embedded like a, just a JPEG of all of the shapes. Cause I figure if someone's purchasing the file, they wouldn't want to know what shapes they're going to get, which is fair enough. And then I got some instructions here about what you should do to publish it, how you can access it in Fig Jam, how you can see all the different weights of the components. Then I've included a few in here that people will actually be able to like, yeah, use in the, in the preview. Some that have the different like directions and links as well, instructions on how to change the colors, a little bit about me, and then also a little promo for Grayscale because quite honestly, like check out how nicely Grayscale pairs with these vectors, pretty damn cool. So I figured that um, why not give people a prompt if they're interested in a font to pair with them then. 
they should go check out Grayscale. We've got the sticker sheets. So this is where you can just easily see all the things to copy and paste. I wanted to set this up especially for folks who don't have a team account and can't like publish the library to be accessed in all files. And then of course we have all of the components, all like, I don't even know how many different variations there are within these components, but yeah, 100 components overall. This is seriously taking me like six hours today I want to say to get to this point and so we need to very swiftly move on to uh, creating promotional imagery let's do this I knew I wanted to create some gifts as promotional assets because I think they're going to stand out a little bit more on like social media feeds and to do that I created them actually in Figma using this plugin called GIFMock where you can basically make a frame by frame animation I think that's what it's called so you create one frame duplicate it change your design however you want to change it continue on then select all the frames and run the plugin you can change the delay like how long it holds on each frame before moving on to the next one it was a super easy way to just create some fun gifts I had fun like you know making the scribbles all build in and then I was getting confident by this point so I did a much longer much more involved uh, more complex gif that uh, shared a few like different features of the scribbles library and is changing out phrases changing things on the screen more and I think it turned out really well here's a look at the two final finished gifs did it got to the end on deadline scribbles is now available for purchase for just five dollars in the figma community i hope you enjoyed coming along on the process of creating it but i wanted to give you one final like full walkthrough of the file so that if you're interested in purchasing it you know exactly what you're getting so let's hop on in and take a look so i showed you this before earlier this is my intro page where you see all of the scribbles that you're getting a few instructions a link to go download grayscale if you don't have that already <laughs> then what you don't see until you purchase the file is this page here the sticker sheet so here is where you can just grab any shape that you want copy it paste it into the file that you're going to use it in remember too that all of these are set up as components with variants so you can change the weight you can change the color as well and when you get the file remember to come in here and um, go over into the side panel and change the hex codes of the primary and secondary brand colors and the black and white, honestly, if you want to fit your brand. I know that for the ConvertKit brand, for example, we don't use full black in it. So I would change out the black one for us too. Anyway, that's the sticker sheet, all of the components there. And I love seeing them all together like this, especially the squiggles. I think that's my favorite part of the file. <laughs> then we have the components sheet, which is where all of the variants are set up with all their colors, different arrow directions and things like that. Please remember that about the arrows that um, for the majority of them, I think there's one or two where I really realized I hadn't drawn a like left and right one but like the up down left and right are all completely different vectors so it's going to give you nice variation in your design even if you want like four arrows pointing up you could like use all of these ones and just rotate them to get them to be what you want I think subtle variations are super important for hand-drawn stuff to look like more natural and more organic and not like computer generated organic so when you purchase a file and have it in your own account you can come up here publish it and then you'll be able to access all of these components in your assets panel here which is really exciting then you just drag one in um, you can change whether you want it medium short what color do all the changes in here you can even come up here to the instant switcher and you'll be able to easily swap out to something else from the same category so this is why I ultimately decided to do things like dividers in as separate components rather than having the straight dash dotted etc in the same component because it is easy to switch out there and it then it makes it easier when you come into fig jam to access them too, because you've got to see them all laid out here and just add in the one that you want. In Fig Jam, when you click on a scribble, you just have to click on this icon here and you'll be able to swap out the like pen style. And then also if you keep scrolling down, you'll be able to swap out the different lengths and also then the different colors. It does not show white very well. Like I know these are the white styles, but um, yeah, not great. <laughs> I figured that people are mostly gonna be using black ones in Fig Jam anyway, because it's got like that marker look to it. So that's Scribbles. I hope you like it. I really enjoyed the process of creating this product and I'm very much looking forward to seeing what you create with it. So if you purchase it, please send me screenshots of it in use in your Fig Jams and your Figma files. I want to see them on your websites. Tell me what your favorite Scribble is too. I have to be very cliche and say that mine is the cat. <laughs> Thanks for coming along with me on this journey. If you enjoyed this style of video of me like walking you through the process of creating something, you should go check out the video I made about creating the brand guidelines for ConvertKit. It's right over here.